who won more championships than any other. Dale Inman was instrumental to Richard Petty's success as one of the greatest drivers of all time. He is Petty's cousin and stood beside him in victory lane for all but two of his 200 career wins. Wally Dallenbach tells the story of one of the best leaders this sport has ever seen. Is. This is where it really all started for you guys. Yeah, the A roof right here, it was built, and, and it wasn't built for the garage. It was kind of for a, an old reaper shed that uh, that belonged to the, the 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 farm here, you know what I mean? And Lee made it into a race shop in uh, about 1952. It's a pretty big facility, but it's, it's, it's not the modern structure that you see on all the shops now. But we still love it here. But it worked. It worked. It yeah. worked for a long time. <laughs> Coming back to Petty Enterprises brings back memories for me. I was her driver in 1994. Even then, I definitely appreciated the incredible history that was made in this garage. For Richard Petty and Dale Inman, it was family first, right from the start. Did you guys grow up together? I mean, what age did you guys really start hanging out as kids? Probably, we go back, we probably laid in a crib together. Uh, his mother and my mother were first cousins, and uh, I can't remember life without Richard Petty, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you guys were basically, you could say it's cousins, but you really grew up as brothers. Exactly, or, yeah, for sure. Lee Petty was a NASCAR pioneer and one of the sport's first champions. Richard, brother Maurice, and cousin Dale worked on Lee's cars as teenagers. When Richard took his turn behind the wheel, Dale stayed on the sidelines and tuned the wrench. Did you ever have a desire to, to drive? And if you did, did you give it a shot? Uh, no, no, and I'm being honest with you. I just didn't see tearing up somebody's equipment. You understand what I'm saying? I'm probably a better driver than Richard, but I was probably a little <laughs> bit scared. Probably Lee would have let me uh, try it if, if I'd have wanted to, you know, but I was always pretty well content to, to work on the race cars and make them better. Here's the winner now. Going into victory lane, Richard Petty, a very popular driver. I had to change the, the my front tire. Now, I've even jacked the car. I've gassed the car. I think I've done it all. But uh, And then as we got more people, it just became they had to be a leadership role. And, and somewhere I picked that up. In 1967, we had such a, a great season out of the 48 races. You know the story, Richard won 27 of them, 10 in a row. And we had Maurice in the engine room and, and six employees. If you want to call it fun, I guess, but we were so busy, Wally, I'm not sure we had time to think about what we were doing. You know, it just, man, you know, there's a race here in three days, and we got this one race car. We got to get it ready. Petty, the great Southern stock car driver, coming around now will take the checkered flag, an unprecedented third Daytona 500 triumph, making him a man among men in stock car racing, and now for the flag in his 120th career victory. Well, it'll be Richard Petty, car number 43, 71 Plymouth, winning for the third time here at Daytona. You knew Richard was a good driver. What were your strengths? Where, where, where do you feel that was your strength on this race team? I think before we had all the computers and knowing where everybody was at and how where they were running and all that, I mean, I think I kept up with all who we had to be and what their weaknesses were and where we would beat them and what time of the race we would beat them and from that standpoint. And maybe adjusting to situations that turned up in the race. You know. So I don't want to toot my whistle, but you know, <laughs> Uh, me and Richard Maurice and, and the people we had here, we, and we surrounded ourselves with, with good, dedicated people here. It's real important a driver-crew chief relationship as far as what he's saying, the car's doing, and what you need to change. Were you guys that close where it was just automatic? He tells it like that, yeah. He says we got to thinking. He, he said it was scary sometimes how close we thought of, about a situation and how close we came out with the same answer. Petty Enterprises has closed its doors, but what happened here will never be forgotten. And even though the sport passed this place by, racing history will always remember just what Dale Inman engineered here. In my book, you're definitely a future Hall of Famer. Um, when you see where this sport has gone, can you believe it? 
they was years where they'd be small changes, and then they would be years where they'd just be leaps and bounds, you know what I mean? And of course, we signed with STP in 1972, and for the whole year, it was $250,000, and that probably wouldn't even buy the pit box now, you know what I mean? And it, it's amazing when I go to the racetrack and they can uh, change the air pressure two tenths of a pound of air. We didn't have a gauge that would read within two or three pounds of each other, and I know you've been through some of those days. I still love going to the races. I mean, that's, that's my passion.